India has long been celebrated as the pharmacy of the world, known for its affordable generic drugs and life-saving vaccines. But today, we're diving into a fascinating new chapter of this story, India's foray into indigenous drug development. And at the heart of this breakthrough is a game-changer, nafisromycin, India's first ever indigenously developed antibiotic. So why is this breakthrough special? How did it come about? And what does it say about India's pharma industry? This is Shubhangi Sharma for CNN News 18. Let's get started. Let's talk about antimicrobial resistance or AMR. You may not hear about it in the news daily, but it is quietly becoming a global health crisis. It's what happens when bacteria evolve to resist the very antibiotics meant to kill them. These bacteria have evolved to defeat multiple antibiotics, becoming super bacteria or superbugs. Two main reasons for this is overuse of antibiotics and incomplete courses. Genetic transfer of resistance is another way bacterial species learn to defeat these medications. Now just imagine the carnage if your antibiotics stop working. That's what it feels like when you're infected by a superbug. Pneumonia, sepsis, bloodstream infections, Think of the health catastrophe that it would all cause. But this is already happening. Antibiotic resistance is spreading like wildfire and its impact is far-reaching. Experts call it the silent pandemic because get this, antibiotic resistance could kill 10 million people annually by 2050. That's more lives than cancer takes today. Pneumonia is a big part of this crisis. It's one of the deadliest diseases globally, and India accounts for 23% of all pneumonia deaths worldwide. And guess what? Older antibiotics just aren't cutting it anymore. According to an article written by think tank ORF's experts Lakshmi Ramakrishnan and K.S. Uplabd Gopal, and I quote, Our health systems have been reliant on older, outdated medicines that are being outmaneuvered by pathogens. This is where indigenously developed nephistromycin comes in, a potential lifesaver for drug-resistant bacterial pneumonia. So what makes nephistromycin special? For starters, it's a new class of antibiotic, the first in over three decades, and it took 14 years of research. Developed by Indian pharma company Wokhart, with critical support from the government's Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, or BIRAC, this drug is designed to tackle drug-resistant community-acquired bacterial pneumonia, or CABP. And here's the kicker. Nephistromycin is 10 times more effective than azithromycin and works its magic in a regimen as short as 3 days. Imagine shorter treatments, higher patient compliance and better results. It's a win-win for doctors and patients alike. Now, nephistromycin targets both typical and atypical pathogens, including drug-resistant strains. That's like being a superhero that fights villains of all shapes and sizes, plus it's safer too with minimal side effects and no serious adverse reactions during trials. According to the two ORF experts, nephistromycin causes very few gastrointestinal side effects and has minor drug interactions, making it a safer bet for a large population pool. It was also found to be well tolerated at all dosage levels with no serious or adverse events observed. This effectiveness and safety make nephistromycin a global contender, especially considering that it is the first antibiotic of its class in over three decades." End quote. But nephistromycin isn't just a medical achievement, it's a testament to India's growing prowess in pharmaceutical innovation. Now, here's an interesting fact. Nephistromycin wouldn't be possible without public-private collaboration. BIRAC, a government body under the Department of Biotechnology, stepped in with a crucial 8 crore rupees investment to support phase 3 clinical trials. Their mission? To bridge the gap between research and industry. And clearly, it's working. And this isn't the first rodeo for BIRAC. They've also been behind breakthroughs like Servavac, India's HPV vaccine, and Zcovid, the world's first DNA-based COVID vaccine. Clearly, public-private partnerships are shaping India's biopharma revolution. India's bioeconomy is booming, growing from $10 billion in 2013 to a staggering $151 billion in 2023. And it's not slowing down. By 2030, we're looking at a $300 billion bioeconomy driven by innovative policies like BioE3 and BioRide. With over 8,000 biotech startups and a young, skilled workforce, India is perfectly poised to lead the next stage of global drug development. But why does this matter globally? 
because the world desperately needs new antibiotics. Big Pharma has largely stepped away from antibiotic research due to low returns on investment. They are more focused on diseases like cancer and diabetes, which entail prolonged treatments and therefore profits. Meanwhile, antibiotics are prescribed for short-term courses and have use restrictions. That's left smaller firms and governments to pick up the slack on the superbug problem. So what does nefetromycin really represent? It's not just a drug, it's a symbol of India's potential as the pharmacy of the world to level up into becoming a leader in not just generic drugs but also in pharmaceutical innovation. And this brings us to the next part. You see, India's reputation as the pharmacy of the world is backed by incredible numbers. Pharmaceutical exports have nearly doubled in the past decade, soaring from 15.07 billion in 2013 to 27.85 billion in the fiscal year between 2023 and 2024. Ranked third globally in drug production by volume, India supplies medicines to nearly 200 countries with the USA, Belgium, South Africa, the UK and Brazil being top destinations. In fact, India is the world's largest provider of generic drugs. It is also the world's largest vaccine producer, supplying 60% of the world's vaccines. The sector is growing at a rapid 10 to 12% annually and is set to reach $100 billion by 2025, powered by a strong domestic manufacturing base. Meanwhile, India's biotechnology sector has seen remarkable growth. Supporting this growth is the government's production-linked incentive scheme of the PLI scheme introduced in 2020 under the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. With a financial outlay of 15,000 crore rupees, the scheme aims to boost manufacturing capabilities, diversify product portfolios and strengthen domestic production. India is also the third largest producer of API or the active pharmaceutical ingredient, accounting for about 20% of the global production volume. An API is the main biologically active ingredient in a medicine that causes the desired effect. It's basically the soul of the medicine. Now, under the Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign, India is aggressively pushing to increase and diversify its output in this realm, reducing dependence on China's API sector. So these accomplishments firmly establish India as a global leader in pharmaceuticals and biotechnology. Nafisromycin adds another feather to this cap, and it is an indicator of the scientific potential of India's pharma sector.